Hey cuties! Golden Link is upon us, and Life Wonders has blessed us with some pickup banners. Sans, any Evos. Well, let's see if this selection is worth opening up the vault for, starting with the Guildmaster pickup. Maria! Was an AI used to create this kit? Uh, the Missionary's Guildmaster brings many strong features at the cost of any coherency. Bringing her usual punish game, Maria safely averts most damage early in phase while amplifying team damage and building her charge on hit. But she has some other unfitting damage sources. Firstly, a powerful swing every two turns that weakens past the first thing that she hits. And secondly, a moderate flat damage to groups of enemies caught in her exploding watermelon's crossfire. Achieving her true peak damage by combining everything is impractical due to their clashing trigger conditions and durations. Meaning, you'll be playing around whatever damage source she happens to have available, instead of using her in a coordinated, intentional manner. Swing those melons probably isn't something she's too comfortable doing. Arc. Just like their rifle shooting out burning chains, their kit was overdesigned to do as much as possible. Arc's most distinct feature is providing a board-wide ally rate up, lasting 5 turns, giving them some permanent relevance as a unit you can plug in and play with for better team efficacy, especially when paired with the Beast Tamers they are. Inside of that though, they play nearly every role you'd want in battle as a healer, tank, calm clear, quick charger, boss killer, and board wiper? The partitioning of each of these roles is Arc's biggest weakness, forcing you to move them directly or avoid moving them at all while sacrificing some perks for others. For players with a nascent roster, Arc is a great starter to fill most relevant roles in any battle quite well. But you won't find this genocide or skilled master in the strongest, most specialized of teams. Lightning Round! Many of these topics have already passed by my watchful eye, and will be briefly re-evaluated here along with the featured AR equipment. Can any of the leaders here grab you by the hand? Three, two, one. Down by the sea. It was nice knowing you. Wait me up in an hour. <laughs> Try again. Woo, how exciting that! <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle! Come on, Marine! Country girls make do. I have control! C -c -c clear Quite the broad range of ratings in this selection. Now, let's review the rest of the Mountain Legends pickup. Ouch. This skit design is giving Berserkers Year One. Running backwards from the starting line, this track runner specialized in one on one battles, though admittedly not very well. Durga can fluidly weave in and out of the fray, dealing a decent 40,000 damage to a single target before backing away. Whether in a confrontation or taking a breather, Durga keeps her heart rate up and builds her board wide charge fairly quick. While it scales quite well with more copies, the charge is laughably weak at its base level, dealing only 5,000 damage per square, while being a live elite through both reducing Durga's defense and increasing enemy damage. Oh, she probably doesn't have many friends, does she? Oh, yes. While obsolete damage dealers are a dime a dozen in host mo, we also have a number of outdated tanks. Introducing Bogust, a tank with an impressive triple damage mitt, limited by selfish healing, shaky reliability, a low range of effects, and restrictions to combatants. While his pull and aggro ensures he'll be bringing some poor blokes in closer, the novelty of a local pull is nearly entirely lost, with both board wipers and board wide pullers now more readily available. His departure perks and damage oriented quick charge do not complement his defensive play fantastically either. If you decide to bring this spectral beast along, this fortune will surely follow. Aesthetics. As the master of the labyrinth, this minotaur has no troubles navigating out what makes a strong unit. 
Asterius makes a beeline for massive damage amp and massive defense. Rend it off with some extra utilities like charge denial, enemy pull, and healing. Don't take too long in this maze though. When his hot runs out, Asterius' self-confidence also tapers, and his decent skill activation rates dramatically plummet. His direct nature lends well to facing simpler challenges, though even he might lose his way when facing more mechanics or when reliability is needed. Well, it's not so bad. Getting lost in a dark maze, but then. No. Did somebody say mountains? Seeking another summit to conquer, this bigger than life senpai enters battle prepared for various emergencies. Unfortunately, his head is as thick as his body, leaving his kohai struggling to keep up. Zell underestimates the difficulty of the hike, only providing ally death resistance reliably once per phase, before slacking off and preventing threatening amps from enemies at a middling rate. He also overestimates the physical competence of his trail buddies, providing meager rations and frequently at a limited range. But maybe a dangerous expedition to remember for the rest of our short lives was his goal. Mountaineering! Welcome museum visitors. In our display here, we have a rare specimen. The earliest known, most common ancestor of supportive column players. Units of this class are rarely strong enough to handle their own column, but provide additional utility to the rest of their team, like strengthening allies ahead or weakening enemies in their column. Similar to Kalki, Freak, Turtur, or Tanetomo. Existing before this genus of supporters lost its other vestigial features, this pink ogre also seems to specialize in healing, tanking, debuff mitt, charge filling, and burst damage, giving him a competitive advantage in the frailer ecosystem of his time. In today's era, however, Chalnobug is easily outclassed by more modern specialists that have streamlined their functions. This concludes our tour of the exhibit, but please enjoy taking your time inspecting his gargantuan anatomical features. I've heard some of you may have had a hard time determining the value of these banners. It's true that these banners have no obvious tell in quality, but there are three targets that can help simplify the choice. Do you have any strong healers? Are you satisfied with your coins couple clear? If you answered no to either of these questions, Kali and Kurigani, respectively, might be for you. In which case, consider investing in the Guildmaster pickup. Lacking diva removal options lasting throughout the battle? If so, consider gambling for Aizen from the Mountain Legends pickup. Otherwise, the punch from either of these banners might leave you feeling disappointed with their overall mildness. That's all for now, cuties. Catch you next time!